This is video number 12 from digital-university.org uh, concerning various topics in linear algebra. Um, in this video, we're just going to take a very brief look at what is meant by uh, linear independence, dimensionality, basis, and if we have enough time, uh, what an inner product is. These are all really pretty simple concepts, but we'll just take a few minutes to go through them. Also, um, we want to point out that we're trying to present these videos in a progressive sequence, so you'll hear us referring quite frequently to previous videos that we made. If you just found us on YouTube, those previous videos might be scattered all over the place. If you can get to the website at digital-university.org, there you'll find the playlist for all the videos, and they're all listed for you there um, in their proper sequence. Okay, about linear independence. Um, suppose we just had a simple xy plane. with an x-axis and a y-axis. And let's say there was a point on the plane, say it was 3, 2. Well, the way we could, uh, another way that we can denote this is say that we have a vector with components 3, 2. And we could say in the x direction we have a unit vector that would be 1, 0. And in the y direction we have another unit vector that would be 0, 1. And now any vector that's in the xy plane can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. For example, the one we just chose here, that would be equal to 3 times this plus 2 times this one. But notice now that for these two vectors here, 0, 1, and 1, 0. Notice that there is no number that I could multiply this by to get this vector. Because here we have a 0, here we have a number, so what number we multiply this by, this top part is still going to be 0. And likewise here, there's no number we can multiply this by to get this vector. So that means that these two vectors here are linearly independent. Any vector that's in the xy plane can be written as a linear combination of these two linearly independent vectors. Now, these aren't the only linearly independent vectors in the plane, though. Uh, for example, we could have 1, 1 and 1, 2. These are linearly independent. There's no number I can multiply this by to get this one. And likewise, there's, number I, there's no number I can multiply this one by to get this one. So these two are linearly independent. Um, let's just call this one, say, V1. Let's make certain we're keeping things in focus here. And let's call this one V2. So we say they're linearly independent, meaning that there's no number I can multiply this one by to get this vector and likewise. Or the way you'll see it stating in textbooks, they'll say, well, if you have some number times V1 plus some number times this one V2, and that equals 0, and the only way it can come out to be 0 is to have C1 to be equal to 0 and C2 equal 0. If that's the only way you can get that sum of these two vectors to come out to 0 is to have these two coefficients be 0, then 
they're linearly independent. And that sounds a bit convoluted, but think about it. Suppose that this could be set equal to zero, where these were not zero. Well then, if that was the case, we could put this one on this side of the equation, and we would have c1 times v1 will equal minus c2 times v2. Now divide both sides of the equation by minus c2. Then that means there is a number, let's write this a bit more neatly, this times v1 equals v2. So that would mean, well, there is a number I can multiply v1 to get v2. It would be minus c1 divided by c2. Well, then they're not linearly independent. So the only way then, if these two vectors are linearly independent, and they are, then if I'm multiplying this one by some constant, and I'm multiplying this one by some constant, and I want it to come out to be 0, if they're linearly independent, the only way that can happen is c1 and c2 have to be zero. And if you look in a textbook, that will be their standard definition of a linearly independent set of vectors. What it means is that there's no number I can multiply this one to get this one, and likewise there's no number I can multiply this one to get this one. They're linearly independent. Now, this vector here that we had, that we began with, 3, 2, that could be written as a linear combination of these two linearly independent vectors, or it can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. It could be 4 times this one minus 1 times this one. This would be equal to, we have 4 minus 1 is 3, 4 minus 2 is 2. So our vector that we originally drawn, it can be expressed with respect to different linearly independent vectors. If it's this set of linearly independent vectors, then it's 4 minus 1. If it's this set of linearly independent vectors, then it's 3 plus 2. Either way, it's the same vector. It has the same magnitude. It has the same direction. Now, Here's a quote. Oh, what do we mean by the dimension? The dimension is just simply the number of parts that the um, vector has. This has two components, therefore it's two-dimensional space. The xy plane, this direction and this direction. Okay, now let's ask this question. If we're in the two-dimensional plane or in two-dimensional space, where all vectors have two components to them, how many, how many linearly independent vectors can we have in a group? See, we said, well, this, these two are linearly independent. We have these two are linearly independent. So could I say, well, then this group of three vectors. Are they linearly independent? Well, no, they're not, because this vector here can be written as a sum of these two vectors. So when you're in two-dimensional space, the most number of linearly independent vectors that you can have in a group is two. There, these are now linearly independent. this group here of vectors is linearly independent. And we can find other linearly independent vectors too. But the point is, is that if you're in two-dimensional space and you're looking for a group of linearly independent vectors, there can't be more than two of them per group. Now, if we're in three-dimensional space, then that means obviously the vectors have three components to them. So, in three-dimensional space, we 
can have this. Now any vector in three-dimensional space can be written as a linear combination of these three vectors. So what that means is these three vectors form a basis for three-dimensional space. Um, in two-dimensional space, those form a basis or, as we saw, these two sets of linearly independent vectors, these form another basis in two-dimensional space. Now, suppose we had these vectors, say, and we had And another one, say, are these vectors linearly independent? Or in other words, that would mean if we had multiplied this by some constant plus a different constant times this one, a different constant times this one equals zero. And the only way it can come out to be zero is C1, C2, and C3 have to be zero. In other words, there's no number we can multiply this one to get this one, or multiply this number to get this one, etc. Or I can't add any of these together to get one of the vectors here. Are they indeed linearly independent? Well, the most practical way to determine that is to form a matrix with them. And once you form the matrix, take its determinant. If the determinant comes out to be non-zero, then these three column vectors are linearly independent. If the determinant comes out to be zero, then they are not linearly independent. And let's see, what would be the determinant for this one? It would equal one. And then we have to cover up the row, cover up the column, etc. So it'll be one times to get the two by two sub matrix. So we have this. So it's going to be one minus zero. So here we have one times one. Then it's minus, as you saw us do in the other videos, this number. We'll draw it as a minus sign by it, so it becomes plus. 2 times this submatrix, like we did before, cover up the row, cover up the column, and we have 2, 3, 0, 1. So we multiply across 2 minus 0. That's 2. Then we have plus 1. And now we're going to Form this, cover up the row, cover up the column, and we have this submatrix, 0 minus 3. So here we have 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5, minus 3 equals 2. The determinant is not zero, therefore these are linearly independent. Now, if you have this like this, you form the matrix, and if these are linearly independent, why should the determinant be not non-zero? What's the relationship? Well, first of all, if the determinant is non-zero, that means that this is a non-singular matrix, as we discussed in our previous videos. Well, we haven't shown yet for a non-singular matrix that all of its column vectors are linearly independent, but we haven't shown why that's true yet. And in fact, we're going to do that in the very next video. So stand by. We'll have the 
answer as to why this works out the way it does. Right now I just want to point out that if you have some vectors and you want to determine are they linearly independent, make a square matrix, take the determinant of it. If it's non-zero, then you have a set of linearly independent vectors. And really that's all I want to say about it. It's just not that complicated and quite frankly not that exciting either, but just to make certain the future videos we talk about this stuff we're all on the same page here together. And just one other concept that's called the inner product. And it really is just analogous, not analogous, it's the same thing as taking the dot product um, as you probably have done in calculus. But let's say that we have um, these vectors, 1, 2, 3, negative 2, 1, 0, and we want to take their inner product. And the easiest way to do it is take one of these vectors and write it as a row vector. We'll do it with this one. 1, 2, 3. Leave this one as a column vector. Okay, now we go multiply and add negative 2, plus 2, 0, 3 times 0 is 0. Add them all together, we get 0. That means then that these two vectors are orthogonal because their inner product is 0. And again, just write one as a row vector, write one as a column vector, multiply across, and add as you go along. Now does it matter which one you choose as a row vector or which one you choose as the column vector? Not at all. Suppose you made this one the row vector. Then we'd have minus 2, 1, 0. And here, 1, 2, 3. Okay, multiply across. Minus 2 plus 2 is 0, 0 times 3 is 0, we get 0. So that's all we really want to say about taking the inner product. It isn't that difficult, at least for anything that we're going to be doing in these videos. Um, and really, that's it for this video. Come back, join us for the next video. We're going to talk about column space and row space, the relationships they have to each other. Then in the next video, we'll talk about the null space of a matrix. And finally, with that background, uh, we can solve some eigenvector, eigenvalue problems, and also look at what has to be done, how to diagonalize a matrix. So come back, join us for those matrices, and very shortly, we'll start solving some problems.